Hi everyone, I'm Stephen Smith, conductor of the Richmond Symphony. One of the things I love about music is that it helps bring to life the stories of our lives. This season, we have a number of major works that are directly inspired by and connected to well-known characters of history, famous and infamous, real and imaginary. Here we are in Capitol Square in beautiful downtown Richmond, literally surrounded by the history and characters that are part of our cultural heritage. In fact, standing here in front of Thomas Jefferson's Capitol building is an appropriate place to talk about the major work on our first Masterworks concert, Beethoven's Symphony No. 3. The piece has a subtitle, Eroica, attached by Beethoven himself. That means simply heroic and has a connection to one of those famous historical characters, Napoleon Bonaparte. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself. We often tend to place geniuses like Beethoven up on a pedestal and imagine that they somehow carry on their extraordinary work isolated from the world. In fact, in Beethoven's case, that is really not true at all. Thinking back to Jefferson and the American Revolution, we realize what an enormous influence those radical ideas of freedom from tyranny and the rights of individuals to assert their independence had on the rest of the world. Only a decade or so later, the foment that was simmering in France erupted in a revolution, overthrowing the monarchy. Beethoven was very aware of these events. During the decade of the 1790s, when Beethoven was in his 20s, he was captivated by the political events and expressed support for those revolutionary ideals of liberty, fraternity, and equality. Not at all isolated from the world, Beethoven held very definite opinions about the brotherhood of mankind, the desire for and right to freedom from tyranny, and the assertion of the individual spirit. Beethoven, along with many other like-minded people, saw Napoleon as the symbol of the new world of freedom and hope which the revolution held out to mankind. In 1803, Beethoven began to work on his third symphony, bringing revolution into the realm of music. His new treatment of musical elements in this composition, including its magnificent scope of rhythmic complexity, emotional depths, and harmonic experimentation, literally changed music forever. The first movement, in and of itself, as long as an entire Haydn symphony, creates a sense of struggle and resolution. After two earth-shattering opening chords, the simple arpeggiated main theme, develops into an almost bewildering array of imaginative complexity, supported by the repetition and variety of small rhythmic motives. The slow movement, or funeral march, pays tribute to the memory of a great hero and betrays Beethoven's fascination with French revolutionary music. In fact, the dotted rhythms of La Marseillaise so characteristic of this quintessentially revolutionary piece are echoed in a quieter and slower version by Beethoven. In the third movement, we hear a trio of horns portraying a hero in all his glory. The final movement, a wide-ranging series of variations on a theme that Beethoven had used previously, are groundbreaking in their imaginative manipulation of tempo, harmony, and orchestration. The final, slower section seems to be depicting the apotheosis of the hero himself. The 
piece of that theme from Beethoven's own music for the creatures of Prometheus had a message as well, perhaps. In Greek mythology, Prometheus, in an incredibly revolutionary act, stole fire from the gods and gave it to mankind, enabling progress and civilization. So, what about Napoleon? Well, there's a famous story that Beethoven, while at work on this symphony he intended to dedicate to Napoleon, was told of Napoleon's assumption of the title of emperor. So furious Beethoven was at this news, he exclaimed, after all then, he is nothing but an ordinary human being. He will trample on the rights of man to indulge his ambition and become a greater tyrant than anyone. Beethoven took up his pen and furiously scratched out the name on his title page. In fact, he scratched with such vehemence that he tore right through the paper. We can still see this gaping hole today. Ultimately, Beethoven decided on the title Eroica, thereby paying tribute to the memory of an idealized hero, a hero that lives on in this magnificent music for all time. Thank you for joining me on this journey into Beethoven's life and music. Of course, these composers, these characters, and this music only truly come to life when performed by the wonderful musicians of the Richmond Symphony. Come and hear our hometown treasure.